For three decades, the United States has processed, launched, and operated the world's first and only reusable spacecraft. The Space Shuttle is an engineering and operational marvel, ferrying men and women from around the world into space. In its 30 years of flight, the shuttle has proven itself to be the most versatile spacecraft ever built. This remarkable spaceship has been the platform from which many of the world's great scientific instruments have been deployed. It has carried astronauts who have launched and repaired satellites that change the way we communicate. Houston, I think we got a satellite. Yeah, we're watching down here. It has enabled technology demonstrations and allowed space-based research in physics and medicine and material science and has allowed the creation of a partnership of nations from around the world to assemble a world-class national research laboratory in orbit around our planet. With the final flight of Shuttle Atlantis and its crew of four astronauts, the Space Shuttle era comes to a close, and America and the world bids a final farewell to a sleek and one-of-a-kind ship that has helped history unfold in low Earth orbit. It all started more than three decades ago. Two Americans, John Young and Robert Crippen, blast off on a winged space plane named Columbia. Now, more than 30 years later, with the 33rd and final flight of Atlantis, NASA adds a fitting coda to the space shuttle program. Even as the shuttle program ends, the STS-135 mission will help ensure humankind can continue to live and work in space. Atlantis carries the Raffaello Multipurpose Logistics Module, or MPLM, to deliver a year's worth of supplies and spare parts for the International Space Station. The orbiter delivers a system designed to remotely test the robotic refueling of satellites and return a failed cooling pump to Earth. From a historical perspective, the STS-135 astronauts are the first crew of four since STS-6 in 1983. Retired Navy Captain Chris Ferguson commands Atlantis's crew as he makes his third trip to orbit. He first flew on Atlantis as the pilot of STS-115 in 2006 then returned to orbit as commander of Endeavour on the STS-126 mission. The pilot of Atlantis is Marine Corps Colonel Doug Hurley. His first space flight, STS-127, coincided with the 40th anniversary of Apollo 11 in 2009. He will be at the controls as Atlantis undocks from the ISS for the shuttle's historic departure from the station. Dr. Sandy Magnus is Mission Specialist 1. A veteran of two space flights, she served as ISS Science Officer for Expedition 18. She first flew on Atlantis during STS-112 in 2002. Mission Specialist 2 is retired Air Force Colonel Rex Walheim. This is his third and final space flight aboard Atlantis after STS-110 and STS-122. The flight of Atlantis marks the 37th shuttle mission to the space station. The flight was originally manifested only as the launch on need rescue mission for STS-134, which at the time was scheduled as the shuttle's final flight. With the launch of Atlantis, there will be no rescue shuttle standing by. 
In case of an unexpected problem or emergency, Atlantis' astronauts would remain aboard the space station, ultimately returning to Earth aboard a series of Russian Soyuz spacecraft. America's leadership ultimately recognized the value of one additional shuttle mission, and the STS-135 flight plan evolved into an historic 12-day mission, delivering valuable equipment, parts, and supplies to the completed and fully operational station. It's a, an effort to posture the space station for uh, about a year, uh, put it in a good position until we can get our uh, commercial uh, cargo resupply system up and running. On flight day four, the crew of Atlantis will install the Raffaello Logistics Module moving van to the ISS. The station crew and shuttle astronauts will unpack about 15,000 pounds of cargo for the current and future ISS crews. Items such as food, clothing, spare parts for the station, and scientific experiments. At the same time, the joint crews will be repacking Raffaello with over 12,000 pounds of shuttle-related equipment stored on the ISS, other items marked for return to Earth, and trash offloaded from the station. We'll take stuff out of the node 2 nadir spot, translate down the lab, and most of the stowage and transfer that we're doing will be in the uh, permanent MPLM that's on board. Magnus serves as Raffaello's loadmaster, with assistance from Walheim. The very first most important rule is do what Sandy says. Because Sandy's lived up there and she's our load master so she knows where, uh, where things go and we'll figure out ways to, to make that shell game happen. And I didn't realize this until, uh, until we got into the planning of the mission is that the space station software was never designed to accommodate more than one logistics module. We've had to perform a little, I guess, sleight of hand to get the space station to believe that there's actually two logistics modules on board. Atlantis will also deliver the robotics refueling payload, which will be tested using the space station's Dexter robot. The space station has a robotic arm for heavy lifting, but Dexter is a robotic hand, capable of performing fine, minute tasks. The payload will be its first workout to see how well it can perform. On flight day five, the crew of Atlantis will support one station-based spacewalk performed by Expedition 28 astronauts Mike Fossum and Ron Garin. The pair flew three years ago on the STS-124 mission, performing three spacewalks together to help install the Japanese Kibo laboratory module. During this EVA, Magnus and Hurley will provide robotic support for Fossum and Garin. Walheim will serve as the IV, or intravehicular officer, for the spacewalk. A failed cooling pump, temporarily stowed outside the station during a spacewalk during the STS-133 mission, will be removed and brought home by the shuttle. Thanks to the shuttle's ability to return cargo, engineers will have the opportunity to study the cause of the pump's failure. While we're in the payload bay attaching the pump module to the logistics carrier, we'll retrieve this experiment for the special purpose dextrous manipulator that will allow the robotics community to show the ability to do remote refueling and other dexterous tasks that might be involved in, in uh, servicing satellites. Fossum and Garin will install the robotics refueling payload on a temporary platform near the Dexter robot and the Destiny lab. It really is the chance to show how well the SPDM can function in space. Over the past three decades, hundreds of thousands of people have dedicated their time, energy, and passion, and in many instances, their lives, as the shuttle was designed, developed, built, and flown. They are the people who have made the NASA team and the Space Shuttle program such a remarkable success, from STS-1 through STS-135. Their legacy lives on as the shuttle leaves behind a fully assembled and operational space station. To see a completed space station up there is really a testament to not only ingenuity of all the engineers and scientists and people on the ground who work in the space station, but also the people who work on the space shuttle that can make such an incredible reusable space vehicle to make that happen. Atlantis was the first one that I flew on for STS-112 and that will be my last mission as well. Um, so I have, it has a hold a special place in my heart for the people who, who have worked on Atlantis for so long. I think it's special for them that it will be the last mission. You want to represent the thousands and thousands of people that have worked 
probably their entire careers. I, I don't know how many people that we've talked to or met that have been in the space shuttle program since STS-1. We just want them to, to know uh, that, that what they've accomplished is, is incredible and uh, we'll do our best to, to finish this program the way it deserves to be finished. Nothing means more, I think, to all four of us than to, to honor that legacy and, and, and go out with as best a mission as we can fly. It'll be an emotional moment, uh, I think, for, for a lot of folks who have seen uh, the shuttle essentially build the better part of the space station and to know that uh, this will be the, the final time it leaves. The one thing that strikes me is how remarkably dedicated they are. That, to me, typifies the space workforce. They're, uh, they're a breed that is second to none.